Hey guys, my name is Jason with S&J Forest Products, and on today's video, we're going to use this Alaska Chainsaw Mill to cut up this kind of rowdy looking cedar log and hopefully get a real nice square beam out of it. So let's take a look at the log, we'll get set up, and then we'll start cutting. Alright, so I drug this log out of the woods here a little while back, and it's in such rough shape I can't send it to the mill. Um, it does have a little heart rot here, uh, butt rot in the end. Um, the thing, I don't know if you can tell, it's got some sweep to it. And the bugs have really been getting in the, the sap wood here. It's all kind of, you can see all the junk from the bugs. Um, but, you know, a lot of people would just cast this thing aside or make firewood out of it. But I think there's going to be some real nice cedar in here. And because the price of cedar is so high, we're going to try and make something out of this log. So um, let's get a measurement on it here. Got my log tape. Get her in there on the end. We'll run down here. This is the small end on this side. You can see there. But this thing is just, just under 18 feet. It's about 17.10. And one thing I'm gonna try here, what I usually do is cut this thing into two chunks and make you know two eight foot beams out of it or whatever. Uh, I'm gonna try and make one long cut here uh, all the way across and make a big long beam and then cut it up into smaller pieces that I need uh, And I and I'm gonna avoid setting up twice essentially if I cut it in half I'd have two logs and have to set up twice so um, and I don't know how far this this rot in the butt goes up um, So I'm just gonna I'm gonna make one long beam and then we'll cut it and make a good beam out of it f Figure out how much length we have and then from there we can cut it into our desired length So um, let me show you how I get this thing set up and we'll go from there. All right, so let's get our log set up here. This is the, the small end. And I've made these jigs for myself. Um, and I like to cut beams out of my stuff. So I have a, this is a four by four, a six by six, an eight by eight. And the inside dimension here is the dimension of the rough cut log. So this is a four inch by four inch. And then the outside is, um, gives me enough to, to screw on my, uh, my, my bar holders here. I'll show you that in a minute. But you can take these jigs and it kind of set them up inside this small area of the log. And so on this one, I got a four by four. I can get more out of that than a four by four. So we're going to try for a six by six here. All right. So let's get this thing set up here. I'm going to have my beam way over on this side because the sweep goes down that way and I want to try and get my beam to go straight through that sweep. So I take my jig, what I found is the easiest way to do it actually is just to get her screwed in here in a couple of corners and that will get everything held in nice and tight. One there, and one down here in the opposite one. There we go. So that's in there. That's going to be held in place. Now I can take a pen, or a, usually I like to use a Sharpie, but get it lined out where my, my beam's going to go. And then I can take and draw on the outside here where I'm going to anchor my, my guides. Now I'm going to take a little torpedo level here, and I can place it right on top of my jig. i got to roll my log a little bit, but once I get this level, then I can go down to the other end of the log, do the same thing, and as long as I make this uh, jig on the other side level, then I have a nice flat plane that I can cut all the way down the log on. And uh, once, once I have that first cut, then I don't have to have anything level, because these will all be square, and I can just line up my, my, uh, my beam holders there, my jig holders. And, uh, and then just cut around the log. So now I have my jig nice and level. Uh, I'm gonna screw in my, my guide here. Double check for level. Yeah, we're still level. I like to do three, just so it doesn't wobble. 
Seems like three holds a little bit better, especially in this rotten sapwood. All right, so now we got our jig, we got our square beam in here. We're gonna have an inch between the top of the, the uh, jig here and where the chainsaw kerf is gonna be. So I'll have actually about five eighths of an inch between the plate and the, and the chain. Um, I like to give myself quite a bit of room there just so I don't you know, have any issues with the, the chainsaw twisting a little bit and getting caught on the metal, uh, metal plate I made. Um, but now this side's all set up. So now we'll take off our, our jig. We'll go down to the other side and do the same thing. All right, guys, so we're all set up on this side. I'm gonna take these two uh, steel tubes, run them down those guides. And I don't know if you can see all the way at the other end, but we have just enough clearance to make it down to the other, other jig there. But yeah, we're all set up. We're gonna get our six by six. We're gonna have a lot of waste on this side. Oh, it won't be waste. We'll cut some boards out of it. Um, but we needed to, we, we can only get so much because the top small and the sweep in this log. Um, so we'll get our beam out of it and then see what we can make out of this, these, uh, I think the term's flitches. Um, another thing is I've got this PV pole and I would highly recommend getting something like that. It is so much easier to roll these logs around, uh, with a tool than, than, uh, with your bare hands. So that's definitely worth the money, um, getting a little pole to move these logs around. All right, guys, we're all set up here. I got my little tube holders here screwed on their level. I got the tubes going all the way across. One thing on these long spans I had to do is get these uh, shims underneath there because the span is so long that the beams were sagging, but now with the shims, they're nice and flat across there. And I still gotta make sure that I'm touching here on both ends, which I am. So we'll get a nice flat cut all the way down and we'll get that first uh, flitch flicked off of there and see what we got. All right, well that first cut went pretty good. You can see now that we got it opened up, the, the sap was completely junk on both sides. And uh, while well, I was brushing it down here, <laughs> you can see the bugs, <laughs> termites are coming out of it. Um, but all the heartwood here also looks really nice and solid. We've got some good, some good figure in it, especially down here in the in the butt swell part, and uh, we can get several one-inch planks out of this piece. And I'll go down there, probably eight feet or ten feet, and bucket 
and then I'll just slab off one inch pieces as many as I can get out of both both sides. Once once you have a flat surface to run on when you're slabbing, it's really easy. So it doesn't really matter that it's 17 feet long or, or 10 feet long. Um, I can just slab them real quick. Um, but we'll get this thing rolled over 90 and then we'll cut the next, uh, this will be the, the small side. We'll cut a little bit off this side, roll it over one more time, the third side, and then we'll see if we can get this big fat side here at the end. All right, guys, we just finished our second cut. I'm set up here for our third cut. Um, but I noticed here, I'll show you guys, we got some, some wormy bug stuff going on, even in the heartwood. So I don't know how far this goes up. I mean, I knew we had some rot here at the butt, but I don't know how far in the bugs get. I don't see any trails past this, which is only about three feet in. So now we might have to sacrifice some of this to get out of the bugs. Uh, but we still got lots of wood there. That's going to be good. So let's get this third cut going. We'll take a look um, Before we do a couple of tricks that I've learned over the last couple logs I've cut is When I set up my jigs, I like to be flush or a little bit in from the from the face So when I start I don't have to bump my dogs up around that plate if they're flush or just inside I can just go straight down the log All right, here's our finished third cut. Yeah, now you can really see the taper of this log and the hook on the end there at the butt. And it actually looks like I won't, I'll get a little bit of a live edge corner here on this six by six, right, right there. Um, but that's okay. But what I wanted to show you is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this a single long beam rather than say bucket into a, I don't know, a 10 and an eight or whatever we have, is I didn't know how far up this rot went here. And it's gonna go up there quite a ways. You can see it's just full of bugs. I don't know if you can see the bugs in there, but um, termites have gotten into it. And if I bucked it into a, a 10 and an eight, let's say, and I have to cut off three or four feet here of waste, you know, I'll have a, a 10 and a four or a six and, a, and, an, and an eight. Um, whereas now I got, I, I can see the, the beam. I can make my cut wherever I need to, to get all the rot and the bugs out. And then I can figure out if I want to keep it as a, a 12 foot long beam or a 15 foot long beam or make it into two. Um, so let's do our final cut here. We'll see what we end up with for our six by six for length. Um, but you can see on on some of these, we're going to get a couple of boards out of uh, on the on the the butt end here, and probably all the way up. So we'll make some boards here after we get our beam finished. All right, guys. So I've kind of run into a problem here. This is the skinniest part of the log. I don't know if you can read that, but I've got five and a quarter here, right to the edge of the sapwood, and I've got an inch plus of sapwood in there. That's not the best. So I, I can't even make a six by six out of it. I'm going to have almost an inch sticking up here with no wood on it. It's, it's, you know, I don't even know if I can get all the way across. I might have a live edge all the way across my six by six. So I'm going to make a little adjustment. I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter so I can have essentially a, a mostly a flat face on this fourth side. And then I can, uh, turn it over and make it into six inch wide boards, um, or whatever. But I'm going to make it about a five and a quarter by six. And if I want to make it into a four by four and, and get a, a one inch board out, I could do that too. So um, I kind of got jiggered around here with the, with the sweep and then the, the bugs. Um, but we can still get some good wood out of this. We just have to kind of adjust our plan here a little bit. Uh...
All right, guys, we're in salvage mode here. We're gonna, I got a little pocket here with some bugs in it. <clears throat> I'm gonna try and cut it here at 14.6. That way I can get uh, an eight foot and a six foot piece out of it with three inches of trim on each one. So I'll cut it at 14.6. If I still got bugs, I'll go up to 12.6 and we'll just chase it up and um, see what kind of wood, <clears throat> what kind of wood we can get out of this. All right, so I trimmed our piece off, and look at there, no bugs. Nice and clean. So we got our 14.6. I got a 6-foot and an 8-foot chunk there that I can cut uh, fence boards or whatever I need out of. So, good. I'm glad we got a nice chunk of wood out of there. Um, but now, you know, I mean, if you send wood to the mill or if you send any logs to the mill and you get deducted for sap rot or sweep in the log now now you understand why because you just waste so much wood and you can't get a bunch of the good wood you need out of it so um we'll get that out of the way and we'll start working on these flitches and see how much wood we can get out of those all right guys i've kind of picked out what i think we can get some boards out of um, i got them sitting up here i got them all bucked down to about nine foot Figuring that we can get some eight foot boards out of them, varying widths. Uh, I got my mill over here adjusted down to one inch. So the rails here are gonna ride on the nice flat top that we've made. And uh, we'll just cut out one inch slabs and then we'll just trim off the ends uh, when we need to turn them into boards on a table saw or something. So um, we'll get this thing going and we'll start making some boards. All right, we took that first flitch and got three nice boards out of it. And uh, like I say, those are nine footers. We can cut them down to eight or six or whatever, whatever we need, but um, they're probably eight inches wide. Not bad looking. So we'll get the rest of these cut up and uh, I'll show you the boards we get out of them. All right, guys, I'm almost done. I've got that one and that one left to do. I've got a stack of boards there. We'll take a look when I'm all done. But i got to sharpen my saw, but I, <clears throat> I wanted to show you guys here. This is a ripping chain, and the angle on this, these teeth is much shallower than like a crosscut chain like you used to buck a tree. Um, these are about 5 to 10 degrees. Uh, a, a bucking or, you know, a crosscut chain would be 25 or 30. So... 
Um, and that really does make a difference. I've tried it both ways. I've tried it with a, a ripping chain and a crosscut chain and man, day and night, the ripping chain is the way to go. So I um, just want to point that out while I sharpen my chain here and then I will finish up the last couple of flitches I got and we'll see what we got for boards. All right, guys, I just got my chain sharpened and I wanted to show you the difference. Here's, here's the finish that I had with the dull chain right before I sharpened it. I kept getting hung up and it would chatter and um, it kind of had this rough finish. And then I cut the board with the brand new chain and it's just nice and smooth all the way down, no chattering, no nothing. And uh, not only that, but but this this board, this face, probably cut five times faster or more than the other one. So um, having a nice sharp chain really can make the difference in the finish and in how fast you can cut. All right, guys, so here's everything we got out of that log. We've got our six by uh, five and a quarter, I think, beam there that's 17 feet long plus. And then we've got 13 boards here. And they vary in, in width. Um, there's a few that are a little bit longer, but uh, I figured if they average one inch by six inch by eight feet long, so a one by six by eight, um, you have about $250 worth of cedar there. There's about 52 board feet or something I figured I calculated. And Lowe's, you know, or the big box stores are selling for somewhere around four or five dollars a board foot. So um, that's kind of what we got for, for our boards. And then this beam, you know, whatever that'd be worth, a, a four by six essentially is probably what you could equate that to. So there's quite a bit of money in that thing as well. So a lot of you guys are probably asking, you know, was it worth it? Um, how long did it take? How much gas did you use? Uh, All together, I rolled up in the truck at about 9.15 this morning. Um, so I had to get everything unloaded, you know, get set up, all that kind of stuff. And right now it's 12.15. So I've, I've been doing it for about three hours. And to be honest with you, um, it, it takes me a long time to set the camera up and get the shots and all that stuff. So I've probably spent, you know, at least half an hour, probably closer to an hour, screwing around with the camera, making the video. So um, figure two, two and a half hours. And we've got our, you know, $250 worth of boards there roughly. And then, I don't know, call it another $250 for that beam. Um and so, you know, $500 in a couple hours is, is pretty darn good money. And, uh, you know, I had the wood. It was free. It was out rotten in the woods. So we, we went on our salvage expedition today and uh, got some good wood. I mean, I got to still get it cleaned up on the table saw and get them ripped into uh, dimensional boards. But, um, you know, add a half an hour for that. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I really do like making these for you and taking something that's, you know, essentially total junk rotten away in the woods full of bugs and turn it into these, you know, these nice, beautiful boards and beams we have behind me. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.